Welcome to the Prada Museum in Madrid, Spain. We are here a few moments before the museum opens, again with our weekly sessions in English, uh, live on the museum's social media programming. This is a project of American Friends of the Prada Museum, and as a nonprofit of the United States, all of our projects are made possible only by contributor donations. And we are here to show a work that, we're, that greatly inspires us um, as an institution that is a great inspiration to us is the Spanish Amigos, the Fundación Amigos del Museo de Prado. And we're going to see a work of art that entered into the museum thanks to a generous donation of the Fundación Bertrán through the Fundación Amigos del Museo de Prado in the 1980s. So here we have a portrait of a dwarf by Juan van der Hamen. And we'll see the wall panel. And it really might be new for many of us to learn that there's a varied and numerous series of portraits of dwarves from the 16th and 17th century here at the Prada Museum. And the history is that for centuries, they were welcomed around kings and in European courts as accompaniments, companions, especially here in the Habsburg court in Spain, companions sometimes to children, if we can think of the two dwarves that are in Las Meninas. But not only so, they were also figures who were fascinating because of their physical appearance, but who became attendees at court. Sometimes they had access to the inner circle of the royals with uh, present at the king's meals or at official meetings or even in distinguished places at ceremonies. And they could also be useful messengers since they had access uh, to the different persons and were, and were companions or even spies. And they were here to serve and entertain and accompany alongside other figures like buffoons and jesters. And all of these persons were, they had a special permissiveness at court that were, they were allowed to break the very rigid, strict protocol that were subjective to the other attendants at court. And here, sometimes they were painted to show their exceptional appearance, physical appearance, but many times also because of the um, because of the affection uh, given to them now by the noble person who they were accompanying. And in this outstanding portrait of this dwarf, uh, there, are, there are different theories about his identification, but that are not concluded. He is sumptuously dressed, if we see his, his clothing, with this beautiful green cloth with the red details underneath, this blue green layered cloth, and there's a theory that this cloth comes from France, from Perpignan, so this is another theory. And his embroidered, richly embroidered with these golden buttons, the sleeves with the golden stripes on them, uh, the cuffs, his n neck ruff, very stiff and simple neck ruff at the time, uh, is beautiful if you come down his dress and also breeches that are also have these beautiful buttons coming down the side. And then they come down to what I call these pom-pom decorations I'm <laughs> on his, at the end of the breeches and the, um, the, the leg hose and his beautiful shoes. And there are actually documents of that the kings uh, would give as gifts clothing, this rich, elaborate clothing uh, to dwarves, there are some that are documented, 46 pairs of shoes to one certain dwarf, I mean, seems kind of excessive, but uh, they needed to be very fancily dressed to be in presence of the king. This would be quite uh, typical, uh, quite important that they would be very fa finely dressed in his presence. And here, an interesting part is that this dwarf has his left hand on a sword here, left hand on the sword, and in the right hand, he is holding a ruler's staff. And so the ruler's staff is an attribute of power 
that is reserved for kings or commanding generals. And so this is a juxtaposition. This cannot have corresponded with his status, especially thinking of the rigid norms of the time. So, but, and then van der Hamen creates this portrait in a space that's almost abstract with just a plain color for the back wall and a separating line, a different tone of color that separates the wall from the floor, just with two tones. He is painting with a very, uh, it's almost abstract, but he's painting with a very marked realism, the figure and the creation of depth, also thanks to the projection of the shadow. Now, this is painted in the 1620s and is uh, just a few, just a decade, a decade and a half before, for example, Pablo Valladolid of Velazquez, which also has a very similar shadow, you know, that nails the figure to the floor. Um, there's a very expressive strength in the face of the protagonist, painted in a very dignified and realistic way. And there is an identification theory that this could have been a French dwarf that we know his name was Balthasar and he accompanied the princess and future queen Isabel of Bourbon, the wife of Philip IV. And there's also a theory about why he could be dressed with this ruler's staff. He could be enacting um, the the Grand Capitan, the figure of the Grand Capitan in Spain, which is at this point a historical military leader, and it could have been part of his entertainment reper repertoire to entertain by dressing up and kind of in satire being the Grand Capitan. And if he was French, it could be a satire against the French Grand Capitan. We don't know. These are different theories. Um, but it could be his entertainment repertoire to come in to the court area dressed as a Grand Capitan being the accompanying dwarf. And this follows also the theory that, or two paintings and other paintings later by Velazquez of jesters also dressing up as historical figures like Don Juan de Austria or Barbara Roja that are jesters dressed as figures that are related to the Battle of Lepanto. So it, it, it's following a similar tradition. Now, what we know about this artist, this is Juan van der Hamen, and he is also a great member of this moment in the Spanish Golden Age that is flourishing with painters. He is only four years older than Velazquez. He uh, is most famous for his still lives and is very important at this painting because it helped us to recognize more portraits of his. and. Um, he was born to Flemish parents here in Madrid of a very comfortable economic st uh, status and a high social rank. Both he and his father and his grandfather were member of the Royal Guards of Archeros, which was an honorary royal guard that was in the service to the king, on made of only of people from the Low Countries, the Netherlands. And he had a great humanistic education. He also wrote poetry. He was friends with Lope de Vega and Quevedo. He died early, unfortunately, so we only have a few decades of his production. He began painting for the, for the court in 1615 and basically had about 15 years of, of, of painting before he died. And he's mostly known for still lives, great still lives, uh, that here at the Prado there's a, a collection of. And this painting being identified of his in the 1980s it was very important. And we want to thank again the generosity of the Fundación Bertrand and the Fundación Amigos del Museo Prado that brought this painting here. It was very appropriate because it fills a gap in van der Hamen's work. And it also precedes the famous works of dwarves and buffons and, and jesters that are by Velazquez that were done in the following decade. Um, I'd also like to just remember, take a moment to remember, if I have a moment, to uh, remember William B. Jordan, a great art historian from the United States who was very much a specialist in Van der, in van der Hamen and contributed to a lot of knowledge of his work. 
And he also, I also had the privilege of meeting him as he was the first donor of artwork to American Friends of the Prado with a sketch of Velasquez in the 1620s also of Philip III. So just a, a kind memory for William B. Jordan. And we thank you for being here today. We encourage you to support the Prado through Amigos del Prado, through American Friends, uh, join our mission, and together we all help support this great museum that gives us so much to all of us. And we hope to see you next week. Goodbye.